Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome everyone on board. Uh, yesterday, we had started uh, discussions about uh, non operating room anesthesia and uh, uh, we did MRI. Okay. So, today we will try to have some some points about uh, the endoscopy and uh, non-operating room <laughs> anesthesia concerns. So, I'm sorry, just a second, please. Is my voice audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, okay. this ambulatory anesthesia or this non-operative room, so this is the same thing, sir? Yes, they both of them are the same thing. Uh, I will appreciate if you try to talk in English because some people here are not understanding our native language. Okay? Sure, sir. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry, I concentrated on the, something else. Then what was your question? Can you repeat it? Sir, I was just asking that ambulatory anesthesia and non yes, yes, uh, yes, nora, yes. ambulatory. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I yes. couldn't focus on your question. I concentrated on language. Okay. So, anyways, a non operating yeah. nora okay. and ambulatory is the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, actually, the the the, the general concern will remain the same. Usually, endoscopy suit. Uh, we have. These uh, procedures like ERCP, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, and we have gastroscopy. Okay, gastroscopy. We have colonoscopy. Okay, so uh, sorry for the writing. Uh, colonoscopy. Usually, the the problems will be with reference to, for example, if you are focusing on the problem with reference to stomach. So that will be for gastritis and uh, like any peptic ulcer, okay? And H. pylori, okay? So things will be like that. And for, uh, with reference to that thing, because again, I tell you something that it is not important only to, to see the, the procedure only. It is important to see the what is under the tip of iceberg because you should be thinking that these patients, what are the possible causes of gastritis, okay? So one of them, which is which will be of interest for you, will be NSAIDs. Okay, so NSAIDs maybe because of uh, joints problem, rheumatoid arth uh, like uh, uh, <clears throat> simple osteoarthritis or to rheumatoid arthritis. So maybe you will you if you will dig, you will come to know that though it is for endoscopy or gastroscopy, but the, the then the next step is patient is taking NSAIDs, and then you came to know maybe maybe they are not interested they are, uh, there is a there is a funny statement there is a fracture i want to fix it they are only only interested in their thing okay that is the difference between other specialities and uh, anesthesia okay because in anesthesia you have to take care of everything so this is just to to increase uh, the respect and love for anesthesia that the care provided by anesthesia is like a mother and care provided by the surgeon is usually not more than a father. So the care which pro which is provided by mother is never a replacement of the care provided by the father. So remember this thing. That's why I tell that I love anesthesia more today than yesterday. So that's what the reason is that you should be knowing everything. You There, there is no escape for you. Okay. So if you want to be a good anesthetist, you have to try to see behind the curtains. You have to do the x-ray of the scenario. You have to know, you, you should be knowing the CT scan of the disease of which you are dealing with. So I'm just telling you, uh, this is one point I have raised, raised to you that gastritis patient is for endoscopy for gastritis and then you came to know there is NSAID and then you came to know that the patient has rheumatoid arthritis. So a bloody door of problems related to rheumatoid arthritis may open to you. So, and then if you miss it, then, then they, there will be problem. Okay, so uh, um, we, I, will, I will focus on ERCP later on, but I'm just telling you the other thing. And then another problem which is related to this one is uh, with, for example, if there is a colonoscopy, um, they are, uh, for example, uh, 
so it may be related to inflammatory bowel disease that is crohn disease or uh, this uh, ulcerative colitis okay so even in these cases maybe there is uh, the, these conditions may be uh, like like found to be cancerous precancerous or cancerous uh, and the another problem but one of them i can anyone just recall uh, I remember one of them is precancerous and other one is not. I think ulcerative colitis is precancerous and Crohn's disease is not. Just I'm, I can, if anyone remember can recall, just let me know, please. One of them is precancerous and other one is no, not. Anyways, this is something which I just uh, recalled. So the the if the, if it is cancer, the all the concerns with reference to cancer should be another block will open okay then whenever there is one uh, yes okay so i was right thank you very much so so the the thing is that whenever uh, like uh, uh, if it is only inflammatory for example not cancer then even then you should be thinking about autoimmune disease okay so these patient groups will have some autoimmune disease so whenever you think about one autoimmune disease, there may be coexisting autoimmune diseases. So this is another door which can open to you. Okay. Then whenever there is autoimmune disease, you can think about steroids intake. You can think about uh, immunosuppressants. So, okay. So immunosuppressants and steroids will have problems with reference to bone marrow suppression, liver, liver functions, renal functions. Okay. So there will be... so. Whenever you are evaluating a patient, if you have the concept, you will never miss anything. But if you don't have the concept, unfortunately, you will miss something. Okay. So that, that, that's why I'm just explaining to you uh, these things that always make your mind like a map. Always ma make a mind map. Okay. So that you don't miss these things. So cancer just just a quick review that whenever you have a cancer so cancer related thing will be again bone marrow problems again spread either local with invasion uh, slightly distal with the uh, this lymph nodes and uh, distant like in liver or brain or lungs okay and this will be because with reference to this thing then Maybe maybe patient will have uh, severe pain with opioid uh, dependence. Patient may be receiving either treatment. So now if with reference to treatment, what will be the problem? Whether it is chemotherapy, whether it is radiotherapy, whether it is uh, palliative care. Okay, So you should be thinking all these things. In, it should be in your mind. Chemotherapy has multi-systemic effects. Chemotherapy will have effect on bone marrow, uh, actually, this was not bone marrow, it, is, it was bone. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, so uh, uh, like uh, radiotherapy, especially with reference to airway, there will be distortion of airway. Chemotherapy, it can disturb the cell lines with reference to bone marrow, but it has, can also have cardio toxicity. Okay, so that's, a, that's why that's a routine that whenever you see a patient with chemotherapy, please carefully evaluate the cardiac function okay and usually it's a it's a protocol that whenever they start the chemotherapy they have a back baseline echo okay and then they track the patient later on clinically whenever you find a patient who are who is receiving chemotherapy ask about any deterioration in the physical activity okay so so this is just a mind map with the reference to uh, cancer okay so palliative care, it may be any like uh, cryoanalgesia, uh, cryoanalgesia patient is receiving, okay, neurolytic, uh, neurolytic blocks, radio frequency ablation, okay. So these are just, uh, usually they give some sympathetic block. So, so these are the things which should be uh, thinking and knowing. So some extra points with reference to this thing, colonoscopy. Again, these patients uh, can, with the problem which can have, they can have hem, uh, hematemesis, okay? They can have malina. So with if this will happen, the concern with the reference to anemia may be there, okay? So I'm just, at the moment, I'm focusing on gastroscopy and uh, colonoscopy. 
Okay, so with reference to uh, 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 like uh, hematemesis or melina and um, cancer will also have more risk. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Thanks for recalling me. Uh, of course, ca uh, cancer patients have a hypercoagulable state, high risk of embolism. Okay, so this is, I, I have actually taken a class in detail about cancer. So uh, you can, you can have have a look on, on, on it. Uh, so anyways, with reference to gastritis, this patient can have hematemesis, melina, uh, so it will be resulting in uh, anemia, okay? So they, they multiple times, they only found to have some polyps. So polyps usually are benign. It can be uh, cancerous as well, but this is just uh, uh, the scenario which you will be facing when you have just received a call, doctor, we just have to do a colonoscopy or doctor, we just have to do uh, endoscopy to see the the uh, like uh, to 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 have a look on the and the stomach. So uh, usually these are the the common things which you can uh, face, and this should be your scheme. Okay. Now now coming to some points with reference to ERCP or any pro problems with the biliary tract. Okay. So so the problem which you you can you can um, it will be either with reference to uh, CBD. Uh, stones okay so when, whenever there is cbd stone it will be following a acute cholecyst uh, cholecystitis after cholecystectomy there may be some stones which are slipped and they are causing actually joinders okay so whenever so maybe you have obstructive joinders obstructive joinders can further lead to even renal problems so this is the the uh, the sequence of things which you should be thinking about it okay then they they will have increased alkaline phosphatase and uh, like of course joined us as well. So either it will be removal of CBD stones, okay. Then other problems which may be there with biliary tract is actually the patients who have liver transplant and they have some uh, like uh, uh, strictures uh, being developed, okay. So they are they are they are coming frequently for ERCPs and they have some dilatation and so these will be. So again, whenever you have a patient with liver transplant, the, the tip of iceberg will be again a big. So, so the residual effects of CLD, if it is recent, okay. And then again, immunosuppressants. Like, you know, this, you just have to dig because maybe the, 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 the gastroenterologist will not be mentioning these things and you can easily miss. Even maybe you, 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 you will easily miss if you don't see the chart of the patient. You don't see the in the system if it if you are even in electronic system otherwise, but never forget that any transplanted patient, whether it is kidney transplant or liver transplant or any other transplant. So thing is that you should be thinking about it that this will these patients will be on uh, for a long duration. They they are receiving immunosuppressants. Okay, and again all the factors uh, which can have liver dysfunction because. It's a sort of newly, uh, uh, according to the, the history and according to the duration which has been elapsed after the liver transplant, you should be thinking and avoiding all the reversible uh, or avoidable factors with reference to liver dysfunction. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, so the, you should be just uh, thinking about uh, these things. Then uh, with reference to another point with reference to biliary tract is that sometimes you don't need to give the medications uh, which can increase the the tone of sphincter of ODI. So can anyone tell uh, what uh, anesthesia medications or what one medication group is notorious for increasing the tone of sphincter of ODI? And if it happens, what Sir, can you do? Yes. Opioids, morphine, opioids. Uh, okay. and the reversal in naloxone in first time. Uh, that will be having an excellent cover for it for reversal. Actually, the, unfortunately, the here it's not uh, usually. I'm not sure about it naloxone because uh, I have never seen patient receiving naloxone. Actually, they are giving glucagon, okay, or they are giving uh, yes, antispasmodic, antispasmodic like hyoscine or no spa injection. Uh, uh, there is some other salt in no spa. So actually, they are giving these things. Not uh, I have never seen. Theoretically, your answer is correct. I'm not sure about it, but I have never seen anyone asked to give 
uh, 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 zone when they are facing problem. Okay. And the technique, of course, which you can say that I am uh, in love with opioid free anesthesia. I have almost removed use of uh, this one um, uh, uh, opioids from my practice. I'm not using, in the majority of times, I'm not using any opioids. So this is another way by which you can um, avoid the, the use of, uh, uh, sorry, which, which could be by which you can avoid this, this problem of uh, increased sphincter of oditone. Okay. So uh, you can uh, have, because uh, now we will just see that what are the things which you are usually in which position this uh, ERCP is being done. It is actually semi-prone or prone or you can say lateral sort of flexed head. Okay. So the things which you should be knowing about this thing that in if you if the surgeon surgery uh, like a patient the, the surgeon is expert enough and he you know and you are not expecting too much this can be done under deep sedation okay uh, but sometimes if if you have any doubt if you have any doubt because here yes aspiration can occur but usually because there is a, 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 we we you can di di directly visualize and even you can aspirate the gastric content so actually. It's not a matter of aspiration. It is mainly the airway collapse. Okay. So it was, it is the airway obstruction, which is a, which is a bigger problem for you. If the tongue is falling and uh, like uh, you are not able to handle the airway, patient can desaturate and this will be a problem. I actually, I use uh, what technique I use. Uh, actually, I use dexmeditomidine with propofol. Okay. And a very small dose of ketamine. Because dexmeditomin, even you can skip midazolam. Initially, when I had in, in less experience of uh, dexmeditomidine, I used to give uh, uh, midazolam also. But actually, with use of dexmeditomidine, actually I have even dex. It's not dexamethasone; it's dexmeditomidine, Presidex. Okay. So even in some scenarios, you can even avoid midazolam. <clears throat> but if you are not, you then you can still have this combination. People always, uh, I don't know uh, why they uh, people think that fentanyl will have no effect on uh, thing, but actually because I was practicing it and then I had uh, some experience recently uh, in endoscopy and I uh, uh, used to check, ask them and uh, I informed that I'm not giving any opioid. Can you just tell me what sort of change you are feeling when you are doing the procedure and actually the response which I get from gastroenterologists that they were saying that our, because usually they used to give glucagon or other in, in manip, uh, manipulations as a routine. And in these cases, actually, in which I had not used fentanyl, actually, they did not need to give it. So their, even their response and the ease of the procedure was uh, better. Okay. So this is another uh, point. Okay. Uh, this is another point by which uh, you can um, like uh, this is another uh, advantage which you can get especially in this case if you are using opioid free anesthesia then of course again it is more of theoretical because practically it's a short procedure and sometimes people don't bother it's a it's a quick turnover procedure usually it if it is surgeon is not taking too much time it it takes usually 30 to 45 minutes roughly to for this procedure unless something complicated uh, or something like that but usually you will face like uh, like the tiva in the exam point of view you should also be knowing up some points we will discuss i had discussed before we will discuss again inshallah some point tiva total intravenous anesthesia and target control infusion okay this is the concept which you you can have and it will it have it, it will have a better uh, uh, outcome because like uh, you are not giving anything which is uh, having any metabolism in the liver. So maybe if you are using propofol with uh, small doses of uh, Presidex and uh, this one, uh, very small dose of ketamine. So actually it has very good, good result. Okay. So this is some basic points uh, which I just wanted to highlight about uh, the...
endoscopy. And remember, all the concern with reference to out of OR uh, anesthesia will be will be there. We'll, we will just uh, try to to have some uh, uh, like uh, uh, points about uh, Nora, which uh, I did not discuss before. Uh, the same thing, uh, the sorry, so many tabs are open, so even I myself not getting the print. So, you see, this is uh, actually uh, this is a review a research article, I think, with reference to endoscopy ERCP under TCI versus standard volatile agents. And uh, what was the result? I will just show you the. What was the summary? Sir, how can endoscopy be done with a volatile agent? No, if you are intubating. If you are intubating. Okay, right. If you are right. intubating, and, and another thing, uh, you can actually, uh, unfortunately, because in some cases we don't practice these things, it will be creating uh, maybe after uh, if it is procedure is going more time. Maybe every all the people in the hospital uh, in the OR will be sleeping. But actually, actually, practical again. Don't tell in the exam and don't tell it quote it to anyone. But but actually, if you attach the oxygen, uh, this uh, port with the endotracheal tube cover, okay, and then you attach it to to the circuit. Actually, you can give inhalation yes. agents as well. And actually, <laughs> before uh, with the I, nasal I prong. Na nasal prong uh, or face mask. Na nasal pro prong will be but a lot of face long, mask. But... Again, my question would be that if uh, uh, we are uh, using face mask, then uh, from where would the endoscope pass? Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for correcting me. I did not think this way. Uh, with, with reference only with the uh, of, of uh, provision of giving volatile, not specifically in e ERCP. Okay, so nasal prong you can you can give it actually. Okay, so but again, what happens usually because LMA? Yes, it's a big question. Ah, uh, uh, you know, L LMA will be problematic. Okay, problematic. LMA yes. LMA will be problematic. It will. Uh, it's very bulky and it won't allow the scope to pass. Yes. Okay, but but of course you know you should be thinking uh, because they you know they are the 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 world is so volatile now. That everything is changing. Uh -huh. There are like, sir, there are masks available uh, on intersurgical catalog. I saw some masks for endoscopy. Those masks mm -hmm. had a port for endoscope port. to pass through. Actually, you know, but theoretically, how it can available. be done that they can pass through in between, but the fibers will be destroyed. There will be problem with the, the, the like it will be bent. Okay, because uh, they will place the bite block, and uh, they you if you want to place the mask. Outside, you can do it, but of course, uh, there will be a lot of problems. So, actually, you don't need to do it unless you are intubating the patient and, uh, and then you are giving with this one. Okay. So, this was, this was the one article and the, uh, yes. So, this was actually, I did not find a good review article about it. If any one of you find it, do share it with, with me. Uh, then another problem with like you have to place the bite block, nasal in any airway injury uh, on the face, this one oral cavity can be there. So these are actually the basic anesthesia concerns are the same, which are there anywhere else. Okay. Uh, just a second. This is uh, okay. So we will just try to recap on uh, some of the. The, the points uh, with reference to Nora. Mm. Just a second. Any any points, any any comments, anything you want to add on to, to discussion with reference to ERCP or endoscopy? Are there any uh, other frequently done endoscopic procedures? Can someone tell what are the other endoscopic procedures we are doing other than this colonoscopy and bronchoscopy? Very good. Bronchoscopy is one of them. Then what else? 
ENT guys do the nasal endoscopy. Very good. You are missing a very big, big, big bunch of group. You are not telling. Uh, gynae patients are also uh, being performed. come out of gynae, my dear. Okay. You are missing a big group. Urology. You know, ninety percent yes. really done under spinal. <laughs> not really, actually. Not really. Not really. Can you tell me what will what can be the problems if you, if you are doing uh, this one? Um, uh, yeah, the small uh, cystoscopy is like the diagnostic cystoscopy that are done under a very small GA. Yes, course. because actually, but, again, this is with reference to the day case. Okay, because day case actually yes, spinal sir. is discouraged. Okay, because spinal can delay the ambulation. Spinal can cause, especially in the age group of the people who are having this cystoscopy. All the patients mm. coming for cystoscopy either they are placed digestant either they are uh, the the removal of the digestant they are doing a check uh, cystoscopy and then ureteroscopy because ureteroscopy the problem is that you need to have a very good block up to t6 okay and sometimes if they are distending so patient will face uncomfortable then another problem actually we will discuss endoscopic urology in detail but i'm just telling you because i'm telling so i'm Maybe other though some people will not will not be here. So I will tell you that another problem if you are doing spinal for this procedure, endoscopic procedures, the problem, especially uh, this ureteroscopy, this problem is that they are dealing with the stone and they are doing using the laser. Okay. So if the patient is breathing at its own or patient cuff, so actually that's a problem. So actually, uh, I used to give spinal a lot for endoscopy, but I have actually now removed with with the like. You, you evolve yourself as an aesthetist and you should actually evolve. If you are only stuck to one, th one thing which you used to do 10 years ago, actually you are uh, you are losing your skills because you are not trying to, uh, you are not trying different things. Okay. I hope yes, so we sir. will discuss endoscopic urology in detail. There are so many things with reference to that one. Inshallah, we will do it. Right. These are, this. you see, this is a mnemonic for people who love mnemonics or they uh, so this will be the suction, appropriate size suction catheter, then function suction apparatus, oxygen, reliable oxygen source, uh, airway with reference to face mark, nasopharyngeal airway, aeropharyngeal airway, and all the airway equipment, for Messi, all the emergency equipment should be there. Okay. Uh, monitors, okay. Standard one and standard two and few of the things. This is just actually, this actually you can, if you want to use this, forget about this remote area. This is a very good mnemonic for any. Uh, this any mnemonic kind of is very good for any any anesthesia management. Okay, so any any resident who is looking at it, they will be available on YouTube. Actually, I have to, no problem. Uh, it's uh, it's for everyone, and you can you can access it all. Whatever I uh, uh, like when, when all the sessions they are available on YouTube. Okay, uh, so I think. That's it for today. Uh, we have so let's uh, some... quickly just have some words about dental anesthesia. Anesthesia dental tomorrow, dental inshallah. Thing. By the way, tomorrow my duty is tomorrow for... on dental <laughs> or I have a list in dental <laughs> or so tomorrow, inshallah, I will do dental. Okay, is it okay, Zisha? Right, no problem. I hope so I just like to just to like there is uh, there is upcoming events, uh, so we will inshallah do dental. This endoscopic uh, urology, okay, and then endovascular in in in, days, or in, in coming right. days, okay. So right. we will be doing this. So thanks a lot, all of you, for joining. And uh, inshallah, any any question, anyone, any comments you want to do it, you are welcome. Uh, I will be very happy if you add on anything if I missed. Okay. So you can just drop a message to me. Okay. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow, inshallah.